Welcome, welcome, boys. This is going to be a short little video inspired by Mr. Black from Pacific Northwest Car Mods and Maintenance. As he did a video on his little propane heater. And I have this here Craftsman Torpedo Jet Engine Kerosene Heater guy. Which does a terrific job of heating the garage. So, fuel tank capacity is 5 gallons. Uh, last year, I did, um, if you were following the channel, all the work on the Beetle in here, where I dropped the engine, dropped the transaxle, did a bunch of work on it over the winter, and then I uh, put the engine in, transaxle, and a bunch of new stuff back in. And at the time, I had a little more space in here, sort of, um, but we had a complete wall here, because we had a door here that took us out to the patio. And so I did all my work in here, and I had this guy, <coughs> and it's now been over a year later. And I just had to put some fuel in it, so I have this five-gallon uh, jerry can full of kerosene. I just topped it off. There's still a little bit in the jug, because uh, as I've learned, what you do not want to do is fill this thing all the way to capacity. What I originally did was took this and that to the GE station and filled this thing up with five gallons and filled that thing up with five gallons and um and you don't want to do that because the metal tank kind of squishes in on itself when you have all that weight pressing down on it which means you can't fit the full five gallons in and um that cap doesn't seal the best and that cap has a vent hole on it for the fuel tank that uh, most certainly doesn't seal the best, so as I'm driving home in, in the Crown Vic and it's sloshing around all over the place, the, my whole um, um, trunk organizer cover was full of kerosene. I think that smell's finally gone now. But in any case, you don't want to fill it all the way to five. That's why I have it not fill with five, because as I move it around, it'll slosh and escape through the vent hole and leak everywhere. So that's a thing. And currently I have it ratchet strapped and bungee strapped to this... Uh, furniture dolly so I can kind of roll it around the garage more easily without having to pick it up and lug it. Other thing that grinds my gears is it does come with this really tiny cord. So tiny that even if you backed it up to the wall, you wouldn't be able to reach an outlet as they're too high. Even with the extra height I get. I guess if you had a stationary like something there and you could set it right up against it, you could do that. But I don't, I don't think that's necessarily this thing's fault. And it's more of the government, because I'm sure they have some thing where you can't have long cords because of reasons. So they force you against your will to use an extension cord, which is even longer than you need to be, because that makes more sense, right? But uh, in any case, this little guy served me quite well. Part of it being it puts out a lot of heat very quickly. And with the insulation that's in the garage, it maintains and traps the heat in for a considerable amount of time as I made it the entire winter and a lot of this one before I had to refuel it. I probably still had a little more in the tank, but we were getting close to E and I wasn't making too much of a sloshy noise when moving it around. Uh, all week it's been in the negatives. Well, not all week, the last few days. Today I think it's single digits and in the garage it's like uh, less than 30 degrees. We'll say that's maybe 25-ish. So that's the uh, temperature between the heat leaving the actual house, coming in here, and then trying to make its way out to the outside eventually. So that's what we've got going on here. And as I mentioned before, we had a wall here, but now I've knocked it out and built an extra tool room that we're in the process of finishing mudding and sanding before I can start painting. And then I need to get a shed still so I can get all this crap out of here so we can get another car in here and make this an actual workable space but the point is uh, Mr. Black had his little propane thing so we're gonna see how well this craftsman does I'd already mentioned the temperature the time is almost 10 o'clock so though I used to be able to get it up into the triple digits in a matter of like 30 minutes from down to like 40 degrees in a matter of 5 to 10 up to 60 degrees in a uh, comfortable working space. Now we've essentially doubled the size of the garage. 
possibly even 150% of it. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit longer. And also because now, you know, back in the day, this stuff wasn't here. I had a clean shot at the beetle. I could put this thing in the corner and just kind of aim it this direction and then heat up the whole garage. Well, with all this crap in the way, I can't actually safely do that, I don't think, to get a more accurate temperature. What we're going to do is just aim it into this side of the room, which won't give us the most accurate reading because all the heat's going this way. Thermometer's on that side. But I've been mudding and sanding and fixing this room for a while now. And I only I spend most of the time on this side, so it does do a pretty good job of heating it up. So how you use this thing is you'll select your temperature over here, and then it can automatically kick off once it reaches the temperature that you set it at. But to fire this thing up, you just simply press on. There's an electric igniter. Fires up. So that's the temperature it says it's in here. 36, I believe. And uh, it was set to, I think, 93 to kick off. You run that thing all the way to high, and it'll just stay on. And then as you move that dial anywhere in between, it'll go to a temperature and kick off whenever it's ready. So uh, we fired up at exactly 10 o'clock. We'll see how long it takes to become comfortable to work in here. So we'll be back to resume and see uh, what temperature we're at on the wall. 15 minutes. That says it's still in the 30s, but it's pretty damn hot. Now that I'm back here, this feels like uh, a warm summer day. The further I walk around this side, the toastier it is. So, that's 15 minutes. And if I walk along this side, it does feel a little bit cooler, but it is still tolerable to work in here. You know, the wood's kind of cool. This bumper's maybe a little cool. That's not very cool at all. Fuel can's pretty chilly. So that's 15 minutes of running, so... Let me get uh, maybe my uh, infrared thermometer and we'll get a better uh, accurate reading of those walls. Alrighty. So if we look at... itself seems to be putting out about 402 degrees. This wall has varying temperatures along it. And everything directly in the path of this is much warmer. But if we look at the door, about 90 degrees. This wall about 75, 79, close to 80 there. I also like with this machine I can see exactly where the studs are so that'll make hanging things quite easy. Exactly. 
good. That wall is 60. So if I aim it at the thermometer itself, even the thermometer shows it's about 66. back in here. 60 degrees on the wall. So the average temperature in here on this side of the garage is about 60. And then there we see it's about 80. Well, of course we do have this big piece of plastic shielding it. And uh, the heat has to make its way from in here all the way back here. And we've been in here 20 minutes now. So, all right, that's a, uh, a brief show of what this little Craftsman torpedo jet engine heater thing can do just a short time with a garage this big. So it's already too hot to work in here, so I'm gonna shut it off. And uh, I think I'll do one more video, which is how long the temperature stays the way it is in a few hours. So you can get an idea of how long it'll keep the area heated. But again, that's gonna be more dependent, not so much on how good this heater is, but how well insulated my garage is. So we'll be back for the final clip. Uh, before I shut her down though, I feel like I should mention, if you look at the sign here, it does say 60 degrees, and as I had mentioned uh, a little bit earlier with this, that temperature seems to be somewhat accurate. Of that machine says 67. This box next to it, 70. This wall directly close to it's 80. But if you look just on this side where everything else is, we're at about 60 degrees. So that little uh, thermometer on this thing is fairly accurate for the area that it seems to sit in. Okay boys, final little segment. As you can see, the wall thermometer says it's still 40 something. We'll say 44. And if we look at the actual wall it sits on, according to this it's 50 degrees. The beetle. 45 degrees. The area around my heater deal, about 50 degrees. And then if we go back in here and start looking at the walls, 44 degrees back here. If we continue to scroll around. Still in the 40s. Around 44 up at all areas of the ceiling. And then this wall. 45 or so. I suspect this one might be a little warmer because the sun's outside hitting that side. So, yep, there we have it. And if you're wondering the time, that's it. So it's about 2.15ish, almost. And so, yep, there we go. That is our Craftsman Torpedo Jet Engine Heater guy. How long it took to heat the room up what it was then and what it was this many hours later so all right again uh thanks mr black for inspiring me to do this short little video on how well that heater works and then uh also i guess how well insulated my garage is and then you can see all the spots that are the least insulated 
Let it be down here where all the concrete is, where it's obviously not insulated. And then, of course, you can see where all the studs are. For the same reason, because all the insulated spots will be warmer than everywhere where there are studs and there's no insulation, which is why I'm able to see through the walls and locate them. Which will really come in handy after I start painting and then I forget where all my studs are. Then any corner or area where you know your outlets and stuff are is obviously colder. Along the door, colder. But that has this really has nothing to do with the, uh, the craftsman heater. It's just interesting where all I lose most of my heat from. Areas where I have little insulation or less insulation. That's how sensitive this thing is. Then the AC unit, you can see a lot of heat leaving through around where it is situated in the wall. Which is fine, that's to be expected. Small price to pay, I guess, for uh, having AC in the garage during the summer. All right, catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching, boys. Peace.